We want to talk about friends today. You guys have watched like over 40 videos of Charlotte and I interacting. And hopefully you can tell that it's real what we're doing in our interaction with each other and it doesn't seem too fake because it's recorded. So we want to talk about friendships and how awesome they are and how to maintain good friendships and keys to good friendships and things to look out for in toxic friendships maybe that's a nice way of saying that, I don't know. Um, and then we're going to test our friendship to be like what do we really know about each other after like Oh my gosh, 19 years? Yes, so we have known each other. Oh my goodness, yes, it'll be 20 years this spring. We're coming up right. on our anniversary. We our anniversary! We need an anniversary trip. We totally need to go do something because, like, I met, so our husbands are brothers. Yes. So that's how we met. And I met my husband April Fool's weekend. So that means I met you, like, mid April yeah. sometime. So we need to, like, do something all right so that's that's in the works okay anyway. but, <laughs> but so we've known each other for a really long time and you know what as you go through life you have friends that you've known for a really long time and sometimes life takes us away from each other I think maybe that's the most common one whether people move yeah most common one I or so. um, you just end up in different situations like you're not at school with those kids anymore or whatever those dynamics as you move on from college to getting married and having kids and all of those different dynamics that change our friendships. I would like to say that I know that I've had friends in my life at different times that have really helped me and really um, been a good support through different struggles like having young children, yes. figuring out a schedule, really helping me be like not a crazy mommy because it's hard. <laughs> did, you, did you succeed in that? Okay, so like having like five kids under four or four kids under five, whatever it was, like... <laughs> she doesn't even know. <laughs> it was four under five. <laughs> it was stressful. Right? And like my child rearing years were stressful for a totally different reason that I was like, I need a friend to help me live so that I don't die having babies and all sorts of other drama. Oh my goodness. We have drama filled lives, but this video is not about our drama filled lives. It's about... Support. Support. Lifting each other up. And okay. that's what a good friendship is. Yes. And really, like, being sister-in-laws, we get to spend maybe more time with each other than a normal friendship. But at the same time, um, your spouse hopefully is your friend. And, right. you know, even family should be your friend. And it's not, I guess I don't want to limit our friendship conversation to right. just, just your best friend. Relationships. Year. Even co-workers. Like, how do you get along with people? Yeah. What's, like, this is a for reals video. For reals, because we aren't perfect, and we know we're not perfect, and we're just getting a little real on this video, I guess. We didn't, like, meet each other the first time and be like, oh, my best friend ever! Yeah. It, it wasn't. It took some time to, like, get to know each other and understand each other and hanging out with each other right. and building that friendship. And we did have a, a years where we did live together as newlyweds. Um, you guys were married for a year, and then we got married and moved in, and we shared a big four-bedroom house. Um, and then we moved out, because it was time for our family to move on and do things, and we still kept that friendship. And then you guys moved to a whole different state, with a state in between us. It was a lot of years, too, that we were gone. and so A lot of years of not even like really talking to each other, because yeah. there's so much distance, and you were having thousands of babies, and I was having drama, and like, it just happens. But, so I want to talk about that for a second, because okay. I think that's the, one of the first things that happens to friendships is we move away, yes. or like that distance of you're just not in that same circle anymore. And one, again, like I said before, sometimes you have people in that circle, that time of your life, and that's okay when life moves you apart, even though you still have a good friendship. Like I have a list of people that if I were to run into them, like I would hug them and say, yeah. oh my goodness, I miss you and catch up. And it would feel like to me that I was never away from that person because I love them because they're so key during that part. And at the same time, I don't want to harbor a ton of guilt because I can't keep up with everybody that I don't, I'm it's not involved so, with anymore. It is, it's so hard. I'm a best friend back in California. Love you, Danielle. And I swear, like, we talk twice a year. Yeah. And, that, and that's it. And we've known each other since first grade. And, but she was a key part of my life for so long that every time I pick up the phone, it's like, we just saw each other yesterday, you know, because you have that special bonding and that friendships. 
Uh, I will give a shout out to social media. When yes. we were kids, there was no social media. So really, once you moved or switched schools or whatever, you lost those friends, kind of. It was a lot of effort to stay friends after people moved. Like, yeah. you had to have willing parents if you didn't have a driver's license. Oh, yeah. You had to call on the phone and leave messages on answering machines. I know you guys ask. don't even understand. But you okay. called the place, not a person. <laughs> so... Through all of that, social media really is a blessing for, you know, trying to stay connected. So I've definitely been able to reconnect with friends from high school, hopefully you're watching my video, <laughs> and that was really fun. And it's fun when I do post things there that I want these people to know these fun things about my life. Like, it is a, a place of sharing, and even though it's not necessarily super personal, I do try and keep some drama off of my <laughs> social media account, so that's my personal stuff I deal with, not right. public stuff. <laughs> But anyway, so I am grateful there is social media, so we can kind of keep some of those ties, even though you aren't, say, next to each other anymore. Right. So let's jump into toxic friendships just for a few moments, and then we're just going to skip over that. Because, first off, focusing only on that does not bring you joy at all in your life. Alright, what makes it a toxic friendship? Right. So, That's a good question, because people might not realize they might have toxic friends. Right. So I would say my biggest flag that I have learned from toxic friendships is it's a one-sided friendship. So somebody who takes, takes, takes with high expectations of what you are supposed to be doing in a friendship, and they don't do anything in return. So I, I had one friend, I swear she ruined me for years, like she hardened my heart a little bit, and I was not as willing to serve and be kind to other people because I felt like a doormat for a very long time. But I'm over that now, so that's good, and she shouldn't ruin any of my other friendships that I have with anybody else. But it is really hard when you have a friend that has all these expectations and they're selfish in the friendship. So a friendship like uh, employer, employee, a spouse, all those, it's 100% on both ends. That's the only way friendships are going to build well together, is if you're both putting in the same type of effort and service and understanding and generosity. And I think sometimes um, a friendship can be a good friendship, and then it can kind of like take a turn down a corner, and some trust and things can be lost. And I feel like that's where we're going to take from these toxic, like really imbalanced friendships, and move on to how do you keep a good friendship when we are all people and we all make mistakes. So whether um, somebody was dishonest or trust was broken or whatever happens, sometimes you do need to just walk away, like without, and trying to keep it in a kind state. Like, unfortunately, that's really hard when you get your feelings hurt, I know. It but. is, but when you lash out, then you never get the chance to mourn and get over that friendship and feel like you left it at the best you could. So then you always, that'll always affect you. Yeah, and it's hard. Like for me, I definitely sometimes have to pray about it and let go of that hurt because it, it really hurts me most. And I don't, I can't take that with me. I have to be able to move on. So those are a couple hints if you're having a hard time with a friendship. And one, maybe the first thing you might want to do is like talk to the friend. Right. I think that's the hardest part is being honest. Like it's always trusting hardest. somebody hard to be honest. And Charlotte and I have been around each other for a long time. And even when we come to each other with concerns or whatever, it's like okay, I love you and we need to talk about this and I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but this is something that needs to be addressed because we don't want things to happen in our friendships, um, to break apart our friendship because we've built this for many years and we want it to last. Um, and so you really have to be honest if your feelings are hurt or be honest, even if you think you hurt their feelings and you're afraid that they haven't. There's been times when I was like, I think I was rude to you and I'm really sorry. And you're like, oh, yeah, a little bit. And I was like, okay. Like, own up. Because then they know that they can come to you. Because they know that you care about their feelings. So own up if you did something wrong. And when they come to you, own it up again and apologize. Like, there's nothing. We're not perfect. It's okay to be like, oh, I'm sorry. You're important to me in my life. Let me do better. Yes. Yes. And really, I feel like as we've really talked a little bit more about friendship and building good friendships, it really reminded me of our New Year's um, um, video. So if you haven't seen that, click here. And in that, we talked about some of these words to help build us and be better people. And I feel like friends can really do that for you. And I want my kids to have good friends. I want my husband to have good friends. I want to have good people to lift me up and build me too. And so as we do this and build a good friendship, um, a word that just kept coming to my mind from that video was grace. Is it can be simplified to maybe even forgiveness or kindness, love. All of those things are part of grace. And really, like, what do I feel like her intent is? Or my friend who's hurt me? Or when I feel like something's not going right and, you know, oh, she ignored me. She didn't recognize me for whatever. You know, honestly, 
I am so short-sighted, tunnel vision, that I'm more that way, and so I sometimes really need to be like, oh, I, if I ever feel that way, I need to take a minute and open up and see other people have their own lives. They have their own stuff going on, and when we turn it in just to ourselves, then I'm missing that, oh, well, of course they're not trying to be rude to me. Of course that wasn't a personal slight, and be able to process this in a healthy way. And again, if there's an issue that does need to be brought up, to even bring it up to help resolve things and not hold a grudge, but give that forgiveness more freely. Right, those things definitely strengthen friendships and relationships of any kind is when you add a little bit of grace into it and understanding. Um, and even friends are here to lift us up and relationships are here to help build us up and evolve and become the best of us. And there's been plenty of times when back and forth, Charlotte and I are having conversations and I'm, you know, I disagree with the way that something she did or she disagreed with something that she did. I'm a very emotional, high, strong person sometimes. <laughs> Charlotte's a good balance for me in those things and she knows when to let me like vent a little bit and then she calms me down and she knows that I'm not getting upset at her. She knows that in the end I'm going to chill out. <laughs> she knows that I'm going to have reason in the end and I'm going to listen to her because we've been honest with each other back and forth. And the same goes when she's talking to me about things and things like that. It's really about trusting somebody, right? You have to have that trust in somebody to open up and have that. And sometimes it happens quickly and sometimes it doesn't. I think grace helps build trust. Yes, and by having those conversations, if you do get in that hard spot and being honest and open, then you're able to give that grace if you feel like you were hurt and be able to move on and not hold it in and be able to keep that relationship strong. So I was thinking of ways, how can I, because sometimes it's really easy when you have like your bestie to be like, this is my person. Right. And but then I have a lot of other great people in my life. And so I feel like from thinking more about this, I know I need to do better about building the friendships I do have because I have some great people in my life and I have some other great people that I would love to have better relationships with so I was like what can I do and so it's like well obviously Tiffany and I spend a lot of time together there's people you just aren't going to spend a lot of time together okay <laughs> right. we live down the street from each other even it, and that was on accident <laughs> that wasn't the plan but it just I, ended up that I way. planned it <laughs> she, she probably did so anyways I was thinking even something as simple as just sending a quick text message to one of my friends especially when I'm like oh I wonder how they're doing or I know this is coming up for them and when you have that little thought in your head act on. I know I'm really bad at doing that. So that's a good reminder to me. It does not have to be a big thing to keep some no. of your friendships alive. Like one of my friend's birthday is coming up and so I'm like, oh, I have to be sure to call her. Just that person I love and I don't get to be around her. So I want to make sure I make some of that effort when I do think about it because I'm really good at not putting effort in. I'm not naturally super thoughtful. And so it does take me some more effort to put back in some of those little things, which Tiffany is really thoughtful, so I appreciate that. Right, and, and, and I am. It's taken me a long time to just even admit out loud that I am a thoughtful person, but I have to because I, I have learned that it is almost like a talent given to somebody. That just the natural born thing that comes into somebody. So I had to learn to not be offended when somebody wasn't thoughtful, when I was thoughtful in that situation. To be like, well, why didn't you just do that for me? Because I would have done it for you. Mm, but I'm me and you're you and just because you didn't do what I did does not mean that you don't love me like that that would have hurt our relationship a long time ago <laughs> really would have <laughs> but when, when somebody thoughtful does something thoughtful for you it helps it helps stir that part to help you develop it better so I would say that although I am not the most thoughtful person I am better than I was I think you I think you are too and even just Thinking of your friends, now the next step is that motivation to do something about it, to act. And the more you act upon those thoughts, I think the more that they come and the more joy you find in acting upon those thoughts, too. So, we came back from vacation. I was My family left for vacation for Christmas, and we came back, and the next morning I showed up at Charlotte's house with donuts to be like, I miss you, I'm home! It was so cute! I was like, oh. I know, and I could have sat at home and be like, Charlotte knows I'm home, why isn't she coming to see me? But that, come on now, what, how does that help anybody in any situation? That was selfish, not being thoughtful and being my part of the relationship and using my strengths of what I do. So I did that and we sat on the couch and talked for a few minutes and then I went home. So <laughs> the benefits of down the street. That's right. right. And again, sometimes you don't have that benefit. Maybe it is like dropping a card in the mail or sending a text or even just doing a private message. There's lots of ways to keep in contact and really that list is all for me to... 
to I have a list. All right, so I feel like we've covered some really basic things, but if you're figuring out how can I really improve myself, getting a friend to work with you on things, like we've talked about this last year, we really made some health changes. That was because we were together. Right, I would not have survived doing that on my own. No, I, I know that have. made a huge difference because she brought up, I'm like, well, dude, sign me up. We'll do it together. Don't leave me behind. Right, and I knew that Charlotte would be a great support in that, and that's why she's the one that I was like, hey, I'm gonna do this crazy thing. You wanna do it with me? Because I could really use your help. And it worked for both of us, yay. So we got those goals, and we got that support too, because really, through life, again, it's about supporting, and we're here to support each other, so get right. yourself a friend. Uh, or two, or three, or four, or five. <laughs> right, it's endless possibilities. Carla has a game to play, and I have to admit, I'm a little apprehensive, because one, it's like a test, and I suck at tests. So the game, oh. <laughs> I got it for Christmas for my kids, and so it's Beat the Parents. And so it's the kids asking the parents questions, and then the parents asking the kids questions, and basically it's to see what would the kid think the parent would pick and what does the parent think the kid would pick so we're just going to do the parent questions of like what the parent answers would be instead of so i'm going to test tiffany first so what they do is they give you <laughs> they give you a b and c so every one is multiple choice this way. There we go. so every one of them is multiple choice and so when i like read one to her then her job is to kind of like pick which one her card is and then i mean and really honestly i'm totally making this up who are you making up so, with over 150 thought-provoking questions, ask me anything is a fun way for parents and kids to find out what they know about each other. Literally, that's your instructions. <laughs> so, I'm making up these instructions for us today. So, my instructions are that Tiffany picks which one she thinks is her answer. So, she's going to pick her answer. In secret, so Charlotte can't see what and I'm thinking. And I'm going to guess A, B, or C, and we'll see if I was right. And so, then we'll just switch a few questions just to see. There's silly things. It's nothing, obviously, too personal, um, but it's, I don't know, it's something funny. All right. So and I I did narrow them down so they're more applicable because some of the questions were more kid centered, which is fine because I think this is again like even just being friends with your kids. I think this could be a fun game to right. spend time with your kids that way and get to know them and see what they would say. The messiest place I keep stuff in. So this is I want you. Okay, hold on. This is asking. It's asking about me. Mm-hmm. And then I choose what your answer is. I thought it was better if you were answering for yourself. That's okay. Let's go. Okay. So the messiest place I keep stuff in. A, B, or C. She's not a very messy person. I have, I have some mess. I don't even know which one's the right Do you have a Monica answer. closet? <laughs> okay. Is that on there? No. A, see, because that would be fun. Adult questions, not kid asking. Okay, so A, my desk. B, the kitchen drawer. Or C, my closet. I don't know if I know my answer. Alright, I'm going to go with closet. Closet! See? Yeah, see? I was like, the desk, the drawer was really close. I know, it was I really close. I shove enough stuff in it. <laughs> too small to keep all your crap in. I've seen your closet. It's clean right it now. It is. It's clean and beautiful and organized, but I know Christmas this is done. <laughs> True story. I know, and I'm like, well, that's what my closet looks like too, so. All right, now we trade. I don't know if I know the answer, but this will be interesting. If I could choose any vacation to take a family vacation, a family vacation, uh, it would be a tropical island, a dude ranch, or an amusement park. The key word in this is family. I'm gonna mess this one up. All right, so this is my guess. I'm probably wrong. I don't know. A dude ranch. Yeah! I did it! Woo! That was fun. I'm like my husband vomits on amusement park things. Not there. The beach, my daughter burns. We're going with the ranch. Right. Oh, this is a good one. Okay. When I want to look at family photos, I usually a reach for my smartphone. B, get out the old photo albums, or C, look around the house at what's framed or on the fridge. Oh, that one's hard. I said it's such a good question. Do you even know? I haven't answered. It could be all of the above, but it's no, not. I will, all I, will, above. I will give an answer. Okay, I think this is what it's going to be. Okay, my answer is C on the wall. Oh, I could be the family books. Ah. You're just talking about how you pulled out all the baby albums and you have all your family books. Do you remember my wall? I do! That's why I was like, I your wall is beautiful. I just made, the, this last year I made a family wall of my kids oh, it's and so it's pretty. beautiful 
and it's on the wall so I don't have to get out the books and look at them. Like, right. the kids and it is memories. Books. Like it's all throughout the years. Yeah. The kids love all the books right. more than me. I not I love the books, but if I'm gonna like just enjoy family photos, I'm gonna look at the wall. Alright, that's a loss for me. That's okay though. That was, it was between it was the two hard. though. I knew it wasn't your phone. It was really good question. I knew that you're more of a visual visual thing off the phone than normal. It would be most entertaining to you if you saw me riding a is that a weird question? I know the answer to this one already. A unicycle, a camel, or a killer whale? <laughs> We're gonna go with C, killer whale. It's <laughs> <That was> easy. <laughs> yeah, what? That was a weird question though. I was like, you watching me doing what? I'm so confused. Why are you watching me ride a whale? <laughs> that sounds like a personal question. <laughs> Alright, so we should do one more. Let's see what we got. If I had to give it up, the electronic device I would miss the most is A, my television, B, my computer, or C, my smartphone? C, 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 because your smartphone is all of those things. That was kind of easy. It is so easy. <laughs> I mean, like, my kids are always on the laptop, and I know. But I, uh, my not, television's hardly ever on. I did think C the most, though, because you use your camera on your phone to capture all your moments, and yeah, that's what you'd miss the most is taking pictures, although you have other cameras, but I still like, C catches everything. I know, that was an easy one. Okay. One more. Oh, let's see if you know this one. If I wanted a piece of pie, I would oh. choose apple, chocolate cream, or pumpkin. Oh. This one's hard. But I could totally be wrong. I know, because I'm like, can I mix them almost all together? <laughs> all of the above. <laughs> That's not an option. That's not an option. She's not going to tell me. because <laughs> no, she's going to sit here. Because I, I almost know. changed my mind, and then I was like, no, should I stick with it? Pumpkin? <gasps> Yay! Pumpkin! Yes! I know, I'm like, oh, but I just made a yummy apple pie the other day, and then chocolate. Oh, who doesn't love chocolate? Who doesn't love chocolate? Okay, so that was really fun. <laughs> and I want to say, like, I'm a pretty competitive person. We are, I am a really competitive person. <laughs> it's, it's. But to be a good friend, I love that we just support each other, and no matter who won those questions, and we just had a great time together, because really, I only win when I bring my awesome friend with me, not just because I, like, trounced her in some game. <laughs> I've learned, though, to be better, and just not play games, so it's okay. Right? I know, I think the only other game that we actually play together is... Sequence. sequence. We love Sequence. We do. We're not nice to each other when we play it. No. But we know that it's all out of love and friendship that we're not nice to each other. Even our kids are like, what are you doing? How can you guys be mean to each other? Oh, oh, talking about our kids. So a few, oh. so not long ago, we were like filming our video and we did the one for the book review. Right, check this out. It's so awesome. And so our kids are down the hall and my daughter's like, right? Oh my gosh, I've never heard them fight before. They totally thought we were like going at it and totally screaming. thought we were screaming at each other. I think we were just a little too exuberant <laughs> in aggressive ways. Well, and there was, it was a argumentative conversation yeah. for the video, but we were in character. Yeah. So it was planned. And it was so it was really funny. My daughter's like, "Oh my gosh, the look on her face! It was hilarious." She was like, "Our parents are yelling at each other." My daughter's like, "No, that's her fake angry voice." <laughs> because she has a fake angry voice. Yes. Yeah, so. Oh, I love it. So if we do play like sequence or card game together and we get a little aggressive, okay, that's that's as aggressive as we get. But right, it's, it's a fake angry voice. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, there's where it comes in. Oh, so I hope that you have some good hints and tips. Oh, share them with us and that maybe you got an idea of your own and continue to build good relationships and build up ourselves in 2021.